Carolyn, chat time, man. Jawohl. First off, thank you for taking care of the mothership. <laughs> it's so great to see you. It was an honor. I can't believe we finally met I, in Prague, of all places. This is awesome. <laughs> so, we have a serious question for you. Um, I hate serious questions. <laughs> that's probably true. Um, so, you were you were, were Canadian, but you were Czech, and you switched from Canadian to Czech right after you were the first one in 20 years to win the Olympic medal for Canada. Yeah. So, so many of us have thought about switching nationalities, probably, <laughs> um, for one reason or another, like mostly when national teams are painful. Um, but walk us through that. I, I mean, there's got to be so many different things that we don't even think about. Yeah, yeah, I mean, of course, I think each person that experiences it finds out pretty quickly that there's things that they are going to come across that they're not going to think about before they go down that road. Um, but... As you said, a lot of a lot of the people that do think about that are usually somewhere in their career where they're willing to, to make some risky decisions. And uh, it's you know, life is about how 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 patient are you and how big are your balls to go to the to the edge. You know, it's it's all about going to the edge but not going over. And I think that's why ski racing is such a good metaphor, is because we were all we all grew up in this sport where it's like go as close to that edge as possible, but balls. the guy that doesn't go over wins, and that's that's, that's balls. It's not necessarily balls to just like go throw yourself over the edge because because then you don't win. You don't win. You, <laughs> you don't, don't win, win anything. So you don't win anything, and it's you know skiing really is. It's not just like a jock sport. I think you really have to be intuitive, and you have to be you have to be smart to be a good ski racer, and uh, it's. That, I think that's why it's such a great life skill, and that's why ski racers do well after after their sport because it's just such a such a great education. So, for me, this last season was was literally how how big are balls? How low can you go without without giving up? And uh, like I said, you know, earlier, just this summer, I made a decision. You know, I had a knee surgery. I didn't know yet, but I had to go for sh uh, shoulder surgery in October, which is like way too late normally for what, what normal month people. Is it? I think, November 11th. Yeah, November 11th. So like yeah, a month ago, almost exactly actually. And uh, I just I basically gave myself a deadline. I said, you know, if if this is where I'm meant to be, if this if I'm meant to continue down this path, then if I don't have the funding and everything in place by by October, then um, then I'm pulling the chute and I'll just walk away from the sport like many of us had to do, didn't want to do it. And you know, the, the biggest thing that sucks is like walking away from a sport when you don't want to or yeah, you don't yeah. feel like you're you ready. you got to finish on your own terms. Um, and sometimes we just don't have that, we don't have that luxury. But now you have it. You're lined up. But now, now it seems like I just basically, I, I manned up a bit, put my balls to the wall and... I just waited for the last minute. I said, "If you know, if this is if this is meant to be, the things will fall into place." And I just took it out of my hands, and stopped stressing about it. And uh, one of my one of my best friends and one of my many like recurring sponsors from Canada, Kevin Reed, uh, called me a few weeks ago in October, literally at the eleventh hour, like five more like five after five after midnight, and said, "Hey, if you." Uh, if you want to go to the Olympics, I'll support you, and uh, I got your back, Fuck which yeah. is which is huge. And it just opened like after that, just letting that energy in and just just being open to it. It just opened so many all these doors now all of a sudden that were all closed for like a year and a half, and I just didn't know why are now all opening. So I don't know. I don't know if it's obviously destiny is I fair, believe in it fairly heavily. Um, I don't know where this where this path is leading me, but I feel like it's it's your last chance, man. It's the last chance to do something. Yeah, and you did say that recently you got your Olympic medal back, and that's yeah, been like yeah. a new tide of of good energy. Yeah, like I, you know, I was never, you know, we like grew up grew up as you know as believers and with with faith and stuff, and we never I never was superstitious about anything, and I still today I don't believe in superstitious, but definitely that that metal has some sort of some sort of uh great energy around it like ever since i had it it's just 
everywhere I went. It's been everywhere. It's been with me through the Alps on my motorbike when I even when I crashed, but then had good energy after that. So it's like just been on this roller coaster of ups and downs. But in general, everywhere I had it, it just you know had protection, and blessing around me, and just all good vibes and good energy. And you know, even going to different places, other people that had the metal in their possession would like have that same energy and that same good luck. It's like people like winning, even I was uh, at an event with Harley Davidson in Canada and they were, they had the six finalists of like thousands, six finalists that were going to win Harley Davidson, like, you know, a $50,000 bike. And uh, this one woman was like, can I hold your medal for good luck for the, I, like, I really want to hold your medal. I was like, yeah, go nuts. And this woman was like holding the medal and they went through like seriously like 20, 30 different hoops to get like the final finalist and she ended up winning the bike and it was just what? like it was crazy wow. it was crazy crazy and there's just like so many stories like that with this thing it's just it's hard to ignore yeah and then after two years i was like you know well like you know no one cares about the medal and no one cares about that's how i felt with the team yeah. right and that's yeah. kind of how this whole thing that's how it it made me feel it's like well no one really cares about what you did two years ago anymore it's you know the Olympic, next olympics are coming yeah, yeah. next olympics are coming and I guess you're just washed up and so I, I left I left the, the metal in Canada I just left it at my mom's place and at the time I was moving over here and I've, I haven't been back to Canada for a year at this point now and about three four weeks or four weeks ago my aunt was in uh, in Canada and she's like hey do you want me to bring your metal back so she brought it back and gave it to me and literally since that point all these doors have been opening and just the energy changed oh, that's awesome, and, man. And uh, so, yeah, maybe maybe there is something special in that. Great to see you. Copper. I think that was a full chairlift ride. <laughs> I'm from <laughs> <a long laughs> old school double at Aspen or something. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, well, good luck in Lake Louise. Thanks, man. And um, kick some ass this year, dude. Thanks, buddy. Oh, oh we we're classic go. hero. <laughs> yeah. See, I've been in Europe for too long. It's like, it's what like, do I do with the eh, potato? Eh, eh. <laughs> Yeah, camera is heavy. <laughs> <laughs>